Greetings everyone, this is Mr. Mall. Today I'm doing a podcast that's going to help you with forces practice number two. I'm going to go through an example problem, work it out completely, and hopefully that will be helpful. I'm also going to be referencing the steps when analyzing force, uh, forces acting on an object, which are listed at the top of that worksheet. Let's go ahead and get started with question number two. So for question number two, uh, we're looking at a force diagram for a block and there's two strings attached to it and I need to find the tension in each one of those strings but it doesn't give me anything about the string. All it gives me is the mass and the angle from which one of those strings is hanging. So the first step we need to do is we need to draw and label a force diagram for the object. So I'm going to look at my object and I'm going to draw dots around it and I need to find out what is physically pushing or pulling on this object. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a force diagram. A dot is going to represent my block. I know that it's in the presence of the earth, so I have a pull from the earth. We'll call this the force of gravity on my block by the earth. And furthermore, I know mathematically how much the earth pulls if I know the mass and the gravitational field strength. We call that force due to gravity the weight, and it's equal to the mass of the object times the gravitational field strength, and the mass is given in the problem. It's 3.6 kilograms. So I multiply that by the constant that we got from the lab, and that was 10 newtons per kilogram of mass. And when I multiply that out, I, I end up finding out that the Earth is pulling on that object 36 newtons of force. So now I can actually quantitatively label this 36 newtons. Okay, all that, and I've only looked at the force due to gravity. Uh, I look around the rest of the object and I notice there's two strings attached. They're pulling in different directions and they're two different objects, so they're going to have different forces. So this first string here, I'm going to break this into a uh, coordinate system as I'm doing this. And usually I do this first, it's listed later, um, it's listed as step B. So I, as part of this drawing a force diagram, we need to choose a coordinate system. And for this problem, I don't see any surfaces that it's pressed up against. There's no ramps or weird angles, so I'm just going to use x and y. I'm comfortable with that. So we're going to call this the x and the y axes. This is going to be our coordinate system that I'm going to kind of interject onto this problem. Now pulling to the right along that x axis is another string. Uh, and the force of, when I'm dealing with strings, we call that a tension force. Force of tension when my atoms are stretching, acting on the block by the string. and that's going to be acting along the string to the right. Okay, so there's my force of tension. And then the last force I need to draw for this diagram is my force pulling from the other string. And this is one pulling at an angle. So I'm going to go ahead and try my best to draw that angle. Uh, and I know that that's pulled at a specific angle and there's 22.6 degrees um, from that other surface of the wall. Okay, so what I need to do is first off, we know that this is a force of tension on the block by some other string. But the next step is I need to look at my coordinate system. I've chosen x and y, and I need to break all vectors that are not on that axis into components. So everything that's not on the x, y, y axis, I need to turn into x and y components. So I'm going to take that, uh, that vector that's not on there, that force of tension pulling up and to the left, and I need to break it into its component vectors. So I'm going to draw a parallelogram that connects uh, the tip of that arrow to each axis, in this case my x and my y. When I do that, I, have, I can now break that, component, that vector into its components. The x component, I'll call this ftx, and the y component we'll call FTY. FTY. Depending on the problem, you may be labeling those as perpendicular or parallel if you have some uh, different coordinate system. But X and Y are what I'm using here. So now I have those forces and I've bro broken them into components. <clears throat> There's no other forces on my that are not on my axes, so I'm done with that step. The next step is I need to qualitatively use uh, quality marks to indicate if any of these forces are equal to each other. Because the object is at rest, I know that it's not accelerating vertically or horizontally. Okay, it's not accelerating along the y-axis in any direction or along the x-axis. Because there's no acceleration, 
I know that the forces must balance in each of those directions along each of those axes. So all vertical forces acting up have to balance with all vertical forces acting down. All horizontal forces acting to the right have to balance with forces acting to the left. So I'm going to use some equality marks. I know that this force of tension here has to be matched by something on the other side. The only thing acting along that axis vertically is the force of tension x. Okay, that little pull that I'm pulling to the left. Uh, I'm also pulling up force of tension y. I'm pulling up and to the left at the same time. So when I pull up to the left, I'll put a one dash here. I know that that vertical force has to balance with the other, the only other vertical force. And I know they must be equal to each other because there's no other forces acting vertically. Those are the only two acting purely vertically. And then those other two with the circles are the only ones acting purely horizontally. Sometimes you may have more than one force that's acting vertically, and then you'll have to adjust your equation. Once I've done this, I need to make vector force vector equations uh, using those equality marks to help me um, piece this problem together. So I actually can write two equations one for the x-axis and one for the y-axis. I'm going to do the x first. I know that the force of tension x, that force of tension component, uh, the x component of the tension is going to be equal to the force of tension on the block by the other string. Okay, those are the, the circle equality marks. I also know that the force of tension y is going to be equal to force of gravity on the block by the Earth. Okay, that was the other equality that I was able to um, figure out based upon the fact that it was an accelerating. So I have these two equality. Now what I need to do is I need to go through the problem and figure out how I can find the value numerically for each of those forces, each of those tensions in the string. So I'm going to need to use some trig. And I'm going to also need to use these vector force equations. Here we're going to start with the simplest one. Um, I need to find uh, ultimately the force of tension. Okay, ultimately I need to find this and this. Um, and to find the force of tension on the block by the string I, I'm going to need to use some trig or um, maybe even Pythagorean theorem. So let's see what we can do. Multiple ways to solve this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out uh, how I can use those vector equations. So the force of tension y is equal to the force of gravity on the block by the Earth. Well, I know that is 36 newtons. So because of that, I can go ahead and punch in the force of tension y is 36 newtons. I've solved for a piece of that. Now I have a side of this little triangle, okay, this triangle here. I have a side. I have an angle. I can use trig functions. Okay. I don't care if you want to break this into a triangle and say this is 22.6 degrees and this little angle here is 90 minus 22.6. I don't care how you do it, but I'm going to break it, use this triangle and find the other piece of it. So I'm looking at this triangle. I'm going to use 22.6 and I notice that the opposite side of that triangle is FTX and the adjacent side of that 22 degree angle is FTY. So using a function that relates opposite and adjacent sides, I can use a trig function. Well, that function is tangent. So tangent of 22.6 degrees is going to equal the opposite over the adjacent. In this triangle, it's the FTX over the FTY. Okay, set that over to 1. Because I know what one of these are equal, I know that my FTY is equal to 36 newtons, I can do a little cross multiply and solve for FTX. Remember, we're trying to get as much information as we can out of this. So FTX is equal to um, my FTY, or 36 newtons, times the tangent of 22.6 degrees. And I'm going to go ahead and solve that for you now. Uh, that's going to be equal to a total of um, 15 newtons. 15 newtons. So now I know that my FTX, using a little bit of trig, is 15 newtons. Now I have two sides of the triangle. Uh, what I can do now is I can um, go ahead and solve for the third side. You can use the angle and another couple sides. You could use some trig functions. You could use SOHCAHTOA. I'm going to use SOHCAHTOA and the fact that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. When I rearrange, c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared 
which is equal to the square root of 15 squared plus 36 squared, uh, which overall is going to be equal to 39 newtons. Okay. What is C? C is the hypotenuse of the triangle, which is my force of tension overall. Okay. All those components put together, that gives me that force of tension. Uh, and excuse me for one second while I plug in my computer. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so once I have uh, that value there, I found the overall tension uh, in that string is going to be the hypotenuse of that triangle. It's 39 newtons. Um, so I know that value. And then the last tension is I need to find the value of the other one. Um, it should be simple enough with my vector force equations here. I know that the force of uh, tension on the block by the other string right here is equal to the force of tension the component, the force of tension, the x component of the other uh, force of tension. And I've already solved for that. It's going to be equal to 15 newtons. So that means that this is 15 newtons. Okay, so what I was able to do is I was able to plug all these things in, use some trig and some vector force equations to solve for the unknown tensions. I hope that this was helpful.